Hi everyone, welcome back to Apple Deco and happy 2024! It's a new year and I have the best project to start off the year with. And it's an organizer. One of my goals this year is to stay more organized. So this organizer has five hooks that we can use to hang things like keys, bracelets, and maybe small bags, stuff like that. And we have the hooks here and it's in my uh, fantasy ocean design with the glitter and the ocean waves, all that stuff. And in the back we have um, sawtooth hangers for hanging it up on the wall. So I'll show you exactly how I made the piece, how I drilled the hooks in, and how we added the hardware. So let's get started! This is the rectangle mold that I will be using to create the ocean block. It is half an inch deep to allow space for screwing in the hooks without the screws poking out of the piece. Don't mind the imperfection on the mold. I made this mold myself and that's why it's staying in my collection because of the imperfection. Um, the function of the mold does not change at all though, so we will use this to first create the blue ocean background. We are using Totable's high performance resin for this step and I have it mixed up already. The blue pigments that we're using is Unicone Arts Morocco Blue and May Springs Tropical Blue. We will be creating my fantasy ocean design with glitters as the sand and these glitters are not available for purchase anymore and I unfortunately haven't been able to find anything else like this. Anyways, those are the materials that we are using. I mixed up the resin needed in one batch and now we are separating them into different cups for the different colors we need. Mix the pigments and glitter into the resin and then pour the ocean design. We have our colors all mixed up now and before we pour, we will use tape to clean up the mold. This is regular packaging tape, nothing special. Lightly tap the tape inside the mold to clean up any dust so it doesn't get trapped in your piece. We let the piece fully cure and then we'll demold it. This was about 12 hours later and the demold time for every resin is different so check the instructions for your own resin. The colors for this piece are so pretty. The ombre blues with the glitter is just perfect. You will notice a lot of tiny bubbles on the surface when I bring it close up to you. This happens because the resin is really only meant to be poured up to a quarter inch deep, but this block is half an inch deep. Not all the bubbles rose to the surface, don't worry about that though. They will be patched up when we add our waves to the top. Before we do that, we will add a layer of Elmer's glue to the back to protect it from resin drips. 
When we add our waist, resin will fall over the edges and cure to the back of the piece. Having this layer of glue between the drips and the back of the piece will make the cleanup process a lot easier. I will show you what I mean when we peel the glue off later. I use a silicone brush to apply the glue because once the glue dries on the brush, we can peel it off and reuse it as well. We'll let the glue dry and then do the waves. The glue does take a while to dry, especially if the layer is thicker. I usually do this step in the evening and leave it overnight with the fan blowing at the piece to speed up the drying time. Now about 12 hours later, the glue has fully dried and we can add the top layer of waves. I placed the piece on top of a cup so any resin that drips over the edges will fall to the table. The piece won't end up in a puddle of resin due to the drips. For this step, I am using Totable's tabletop resin. It is their coating resin. And for the white waves, I mixed in Casting Crafts opaque white pigment to my resin. I will coat the entire piece with clear tabletop resin, pour the white, and create the waves. We let the top coat of waste fully cure and this is what the back of our piece looks like right now. All of those strips on the sides is because the resin spilled over the edges. Good thing we protected the back with glue. We just have to peel the glue and the back will be clean from drips, no sanding necessary. For this step, I like to use a sharp tool to carefully pick at any glue bubbles so that way I'm not scratching the back of my work. Here is the completed piece. It looks so magical with the glitters and the waves flowing. I don't think I'll ever get tired of my Fantasy Ocean collection. <laughs> Now to add the hooks, we are using these black hooks that I got from Amazon. I like the size of these and they've held up well for me. I used these in our previous organizer video, the mountain key holder that I made for myself over a year ago and it's still perfectly fine. I did have to get different screws for these because the ones that came with the hooks broke really easily. So I got these silver wood screws from Walmart. They are half an inch deep, which is the depth of this piece. I actually sized my mold to match the depth of the screw. You can see that once we drill the screws in, we won't have to worry about it poking out through the piece. I will be drilling the screws in with my Black & Decker drill. I have this screwdriver kit that I'll be using one of the bits from. They're pretty short and not exactly the best for this, but it works fine and one of my goals this year is to use what I have before getting extra supplies. I find the right bit that matches the screws we have, attach it to the drill, and then we'll actually do some measuring. I use a ruler and marked every two inches for five hooks, starting from one and ending at nine, so there's one inch on both sides of the organizer. 
you can add more or less hooks for your own piece. I will just draw one hook in on camera to show you how it's done and finish up the rest off camera. Then we'll add the hanging hardware to complete the organizer. I just want to make a note that it will be easier if you made pilot holes, like drilling a hole in before the screws. I didn't do that because it didn't come to my mind until afterwards, but that's just a note for you when you make your organizer. Now here you can see that as I am drilling the screws in, it's creating a lot of dust from the resin because it's drilling into the resin. So I just use my Cricut weeding too. I use it for whatever I can. And so I'm just cleaning up the dust that's in between the screws and the hooks and then there's a gap in between the hook and the piece right now where there is also some dust. So I just use the tool to clean it up. You could use a toothpick or whatever you can use to pick at the dust. And then also, the first screw, as I mentioned before, that this screw bit is short, so I wasn't really able to get the bottom screw in all the way through, but the screw kit came with a manual uh, screwdriver attachment, so I just attached the screw bit to that and I manually screwed in the bottom screw. Another note is to be careful when you're cleaning up the dust because I accidentally scratched my hook. We could patch that up a little bit, maybe paint it, but yeah, just be careful. Now here are all the hooks attached to the piece and one final step is the hanging hardware. I will use two of these sawtooth hangers and E6000 glue. We can drill the hangers in but then the screws will show through the front of the piece mainly because the piece itself isn't that deep. E6000 glue has worked well for me. I leave the glue to cure for 24 hours. I don't touch it at all and it's pretty strong. Sometimes I will add weight to it just in case but I find that this glue has worked well for me. You can also add UV resin over where the screws would be for support, extra support if you need. This will be as a key holder so the glue itself will hold up the weight needed. Once the glue is dried, I'll hang this up and show you how the organizer looks like when it's in use. I'm placing the organizer on some thumbtacks since I'm not allowed to drill into the walls. I wish I had a nicer color wall to show this piece off in. Maybe I'll set up a fake wall for this purpose or something, but the organizer looks so pretty. It's bright and colorful and then sparkly with the glitters. I'm placing some keychains because don't show off your keys on camera. And then we have a watch and scrunchies on this organizer just to give you some ideas of what you can put on yours. Let me know what you think of this organizer. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed making this organizer with me. I have a lot planned for 2024 from art tutorials to more small business talks. So don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know when I have my, um, when I post my videos. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and comment what you want to see next. I'll see you next time.